Very good. Yeah, we can maybe chant for some time till the Prabhu is doing. Krishna Mataji, Danvat Pranam, so glorious to Shila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas and all the assembled Vaishnavas. This is Kirti Dasundri Dasi. Hare Krishna, Kirti Dasundri Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji, for joining regularly. Maybe Mataji, we can chant for some time till the Prabhuji join. Prabhuji not join it. Okay, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Anandanath Pranam, our glorious Krishna Prabhupada and Maharaj. Uh, today's class is given by His Grace, Gauranga Darshan Prabhu. Prabhuji is already in call. And Prabhuji, we welcome in Bhakti Sangha Japa group. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your valuable association in the call. Please take over the call, Prabhuji. We are reading Chaitanya Charitra Amrita Antelila 15.1 onwards, Prabhuji. Haribo? Am I out? Are you hearing me? Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna? Yes, Prabhuji, you are audible. Last time I'm operating on phone. Okay, I'll, I'll start. 15 chapter. I have my book. Hare Krishna. We can't hear Prabhuji Mataji. Yeah, Prabhuji's internet, I think it's a very uh, bad Mataji. Prabhuji. Also. Maybe he will join again. Yeah, we can just wait for a few minutes. Let him join. Am I audible? I somehow got disconnected. Uh, Prabhuji, the sound is breaking, Prabhu. Sound is at the breaking. Yeah. Oh, my internet connection is poor. I think. Mm. Okay. So, shall I switch off my video and focus only on audio? 
Hare Krishna. Am I audible now? Yes, Prabhu. We are better, yeah. Okay, fine. So we are reading from uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit, uh, 15 chapter, first shloka. We can't hear you, Prabhuji. We can't hear. The voice is breaking. Okay. okay. It's because of poor internet. Uh, what can I do? Can someone call me on a normal call? Is it possible? Okay, can I call you, Prabhu? But how will I connect you to Zoom? Shall I put my phone on speaker? That way it works? Yeah, I, I think last time you did like that. One or two have done like that. Yes, Mataji. Yes, That's what we did last time. Okay, so you want to call Prabhu? Um, yeah. or you want okay, I'll call him uh, and then let's see what we can do. Let me call you, Prabhu. Okay. I can speak like this, right? Okay, just wait, Prabhu. So everyone can hear Prabhuji? Very clearly, yes. Okay, yes, so we can hear. You can go ahead. Okay, great. Loka Kavirat Goswami describes the uh, ecstatic emotions of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, Krishna Bhava Bho Nimagno Magna Chetasam Gaurena Harina Prema Maria Da Bhori Darshita. So Durgave Krishna Bhava Bho means Bhava is emotions or love for Krishna. Krishna Bhava Abdho means an ocean of love for Krishna. Durgave Krishna Bhava Bho means it's very difficult to understand the oceanic love that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had for Krishna. Nimagno magna chetasa, nimagnon magna chetasa means Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has completely submerged his heart in that love for Krishna. Gaurena harina prema maryada bhuri darshita. So Gaura, Lord Gauranga Mahaprabhu, hmm, had such exalted love for Krishna and he exhibited that love in various ways. And that's the subject matter of this chapter and several other sections of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita also. So, now, in the later shlokas, Tavaraj Goswami says, in the second and third shlokas, he says, Jaya Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Adhishwara Jaya Nityananda Purna Ananda Kalevara So, it's just a prayer to the Lord so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Adhishwara. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jaya Nityananda Purnananda Kalevara. And also, uh, Nityananda Prabhu also is filled with transcendental bliss. Purna Ananda Kalevara. Uh, his Kalevara is body. His body is filled with complete spiritual bliss. Third shloka. Jaya Dvaita Charya Krishna Chaitanya Priyatama. Jaya Srivasa Adi Prabhura Bhakta Gana. So Advaita Charya is very dear to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, also Srivas Thakur and many other devotees, uh, like they are also so glorious and Kavras Goswami is often obeisances to all of them. First sloka. Emata Mahaprabhu Ratri Divasi Atmas Purti Nahi Krishna Bhava Veshi. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is absorbed in Bhavavesha, Krishna Bhavavesha, 
means ecstatic emotions for Lord Krishna. Rastri Divasi means in the morning and in the night. Means in the day and the night. So his days and nights are completely filled with his ecstatic emotions for the Lord. So, and uh, in the fifth sloka, Kavadaj Goswami says, Kabhu bhavi magna kabhu ardha bhahya spurti kabhu bhahya spurti etina riti prabhu sthiti So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to get absorbed in Krishna Prem in three ways. In three states of consciousness, he was absorbed in Krishna Prem. Number one is kabhu bhavi magna kabhu ardha bhahya spurti so first is Bhavi Magna, he is completely immersed in Bhava, totally uh, immersed in ecstatic love for Krishna. Second is Ardha Bhakya Spurti, means Bhakya Spurti, his external consciousness Ardha, partial Ardha. So he is, means he is absorbing love for Krishna, but he is also slightly aware of what is happening in the external world. Then third is Kabu Bhashya Spurti, means he is totally in external consciousness, means he is aware of what's happening around him. There is love, but the love is not immersing him completely, but he is also kind of aware of outside world. So in this way, in three states of consciousness, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forgot himself day and night in ecstatic love for Krishna. So when he has full Bhashya Spurti, he would also uh, see devotees, talk to devotees and do all that. So, now sixth shloka. I will elaborate on this, but I am going through the shloka. I was allocated ten shlokas. Sixth shloka. Nana darshana bhojana deha svabhave hai kumare rachaka yena tataka firai Actually, Mahaprabhu was always immersed in emotion. Uh, an example is given. So, just like a potter's wheel turns without the potter touching it, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is doing all his bodily activities like taking lunch, going to temple, taking bath and then doing his regular duties mechanically, automatically, without he investing a conscious uh, uh, thought or uh, endeavor in all his activities. These activities are going on automatically, mechanically. Basically, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not so uh, keen on, uh, keenly focusing on his external duties, bathing and eating and all. He is always in his own world of Krishna Prema. And further, even we also experience this kind of uh, things when we are uh, too much immersed in uh, completing one service, uh, making a document or making a PowerPoint or doing deity worship or cooking for the Lord. So certain activities totally immerses and uh, we may not be able to keep track of what's going on around us. Right? Somebody may be uh, shouting, somebody may be discussing many things, but we are in our own world. So even at, uh, uh, at our stage also, there could be some rare moments of uh, Immersion or absorption. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always in the absorption of love for Krishna. Now, Tavadaj Goswami is describing all these uh, things in the Anche Leela. Because in the Adi Leela and Madhya Leela, Tavadaj Goswami mainly focused on describing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching activities and early pastimes. But Anche Leela, he describes more of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, uh, you know, ecstatic feelings. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended onto this planet uh, for various reasons. There are some internal reasons and there are some external reasons. So, as we have studied in the Adilila of Chaitanya Tirtamri, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had three reasons why he descended onto this planet. Uh, external reasons. Number one is uh, he is uh, uh, wanting to establish Yuga Dharma. He wanted to spread the Holy 
the names of Krishna. That's establishing Yoga Dharma. And another reason is he wanted to bestow uh, Krishna Prema, especially in the mood of Vrajavasi. So he wanted to bestow Vraja Bhakti on all of us. The third reason is Advaita Charya called him uh, with uh, servant prayers and worshipping him with Tulasi and Ganga water. So we see that uh, there are three reasons for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's descent. But these are all external reasons. The real reasons, the more confidential prime reasons for Lord Chaitanya's, Lord Chaitanya's uh, appearance are uh, to, to experience the emotions of Sri Radharani. He wanted to completely absorb himself in the emotions of Radharani. So his appreciation for Radharani's love made Krishna appear as Chaitanya Mahaku. And what is the identity of uh, Lord Chaitanya? Tavaraj Goswami says in the fifth shloka of Adilila in the Mangala Charan. He says, Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Haladi Shakti Rasma Ekatma Navapi Bhuvipura Deha Bhega Ugatoto Chaitanya Kshyam Prakata Madhuna Tadvayam Tekya Matam Radha Bhava Jiti Sugalitam Naomi Krishna Svarupam Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Haladi Shakti Rasma All the uh, Pastimes of Radha and Krishna are transformations of Lajini Shakti or the internal potency of the Supreme Lord. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir Lajini Shakti Vatma. Ekatma Nagati Bhuvipura Deha Bheda Ogatautau. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, they have manifested themselves as two personalities, a male and a female. When? We don't know. Abhi Bhuri Pura. No one can trace out when did these uh, uh, two personalities manifest. They are there. They are existent since time immemorial. Mm-hmm. And uh, again in the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu they have become one. Chaitanya Kshyam Prakata Vahudha Tadvayam Chaitya Mahatam means in the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, these two personalities, Radha and Krishna, have again become one. They are one, they were one, they became two. Again they became one. How did this happen? Radha Bhavadjiti Suvalitam Naomi Krishna Svarupam Radha Bhava means the emotions of Pradharan. Radha Jiti means the bodily complexion of Pradharan. Radha Bhava Jiti Suvalitam Naomi Krishna Swarupam. That Supreme Lord Krishna has accepted the emotions and complexion of Radharani and took the form of Lord Chaitanya. So, this is the identity of Lord Chaitanya. This is Gora Tattva. Who is Goranga? Goranga is a combination of Radha and Krishna. But why did he become so? There are three reasons, three confidential reasons. We have seen three external reasons. To establish Yoga Dharma, to give us Vraja Bhakti and to respond to Advaita Charya's request, prayers. But internal reasons are more confidential. Uh, Kavras Goswami describes these internal reasons in the uh, sixth shloka of Adi Lila. He says that uh, uh, Radha Sri Ra Sri, there is the shloka, I am not recollecting the beginning. So, the shloka says that Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahivaha Kidrisho Vahanayiva means what is the greatness of Srimati Radharani's law? Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vahanayiva. What is the greatness of Srimati Radharani's law for me? Because Radharani's law makes Krishna dance. Radharani's law is like Guru and uh, Krishna is like a student. Huh? So, Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Ki Dushovanayeva What is the greatness of Radharani's love for Krishna? And Swadhyo Yena Dhutama Dhuribha Ki Dushovamadhiya 
सौख्यम चास्यामदनुभवत कीदृशम वेति लोभा तद्भावाढ्यः समझ निशचि गर्भ सिंधौ हरिंदु स्वाद्यो येन अद्भुत मधुरिमा कीदृशो वामदीयः इन द सेकंड लाइन करस दिस सम वी डिस्कस द सेकंड रीज दैट इज व्हाट आर द वंडरफुल क्वालिटीज एंड व्हाट इज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ स्वीटनेस ऑफ कृष्णा दैट मेक्स राधारानी लव हिम सो मच सौख्यो येन अद्भुत मधुरिमा Uh, my own sweetness. Krishna wanted to understand the extent of his own sweetness. Third reason is when Radharani experiences the sweetness of Krishna, how will she feel? What's the great uh, amount of happiness that she feels? Krishna wanted to uh, experience a similar amount of happiness. So basically, the three confidential reasons for Krishna's descent is Lord Caitanya were number one. Krishna wanted to understand Radharani's love. Number two, Krishna wanted to understand the extent of his own sweetness. Number three, Krishna wanted to experience the happiness of Radharani when she releases Krishna's feet. Now the second and third reason may seem similar. So the second reason is <coughs> Krishna wanted to understand his own sweetness. Why is Gulab Javan so tasty? <laughs> So to understand why gulab jamun is so tasty is the second reason. When you eat gulab jamun, what is your happiness? That is third reason. So why is Krishna so great? Why is Krishna so sweet? Uh, what is the extent of Krishna's sweetness and wonderful qualities that Radharani is releasing? That is second reason. But when she actually experiences rather Krishna's sweetness, uh, like what is her happiness? So Krishna wanted to. Uh, wanted wanted to have a similar happiness. So these are the three internal reasons for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's descent. Now, several pastimes in the Adi Lila and especially in Madhya Lila uh, are related to the external reasons of Lord Chaitanya's descent. But several pastimes in the Anti Lila are related to the internal reasons for Lord Chaitanya's appearance. So you can see in Sri Chaitanya Chiritramrita there are sixty-two chapters. There are three sections: Adi, Madhya, and Anti Lila. There are more than eleven thousand shlokas, and uh, around eight hundred shlokas are quoted from uh, multiple scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Sri Mad Bhagavatam, Bhakti Rasamrita, Sindhu, Vidhan Dhamadhu, Lalita Madhu, and many such uh, scriptures. So it's such a comprehensive. Uh, no magnum opus work of Kaviraj Goswami, which he has done about ninety years when he was about ninety. So all these uh, varieties of pastimes of Lord Chaitanya recorded in Chaitanya Charitamrit can be seen from the perspective of the purposes of Lord Chaitanya's descent. So in every pastime, Mahaprabhu is fulfilling one of these purposes. Either external reasons or internal reasons. The external purposes are to give Krishna prema or Krishna bhakti to people. The internal reasons are to experience Radharani emotions. So he is doing one of these two. Okay. And Madhurila constitutes of uh, is predominantly the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, where he is fulfilling the external reasons for his descent. Madhurila is kind of prelude. First seven chapters are just. Uh, Allocated to establish the tattva of Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, the Nagdhita, Panchi tattva. Seven chapters going that. Next five chapters going just enumerating the devotees of Lord Chaitanya, uh, in a, with a figurative example of uh, a tree. Mahaprabhu is compared with a tree, the tree of love of Godhead, and all his associates and devotees are compared to the trunk, branches, and uh, uh, leaves and twigs. Of the tree, the twelve chapters go there like that only. The last five chapters is a very super quick summary of the initial pastimes of Lord Chaitanya before he accepted sannyas. Because Vrindavan Das Thakur has already described uh, the Adi Lila of uh, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes in his book Chaitanya Bhagavat. Kaviraj Goswami doesn't touch upon them so much. 
So now Majjalila actually has so many pastimes. 25 chapters. And these 25 chapters are describing only uh, the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya that we did up to his uh, 30th year. It's only 6 years. First 24 years of Mahaprabhu's life, recent years life, is summarized in just 5 chapters of Agilila. But from 24th year or 25th year to 30th year, the pastimes that Chaitanya did in 6 years are summarized in, are elaborated in Madhya Leela, in 25 chapters. That's all, most of them are related to external reasons. So Mahaprabhu, through his activities in say, South India Yatra, he empowers devotees. Empowers different people in South India with Krishna Prem and then he transforms. He does a lot of preaching. He transforms Prakashananda Saraswati, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya and all that. Uh, and he goes for South India Yatra, he goes for Vrindavan Yatra, he, he is ecstatically dancing in Rathi Yatra, doing Gundicha Maharaj and many things he does. So most of these pastimes are connected to fulfilling the external reasons for his business. But also in Madhya, there are several pastimes where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is focusing on his internal reasons, <laughs> experiencing Radharani's emotions. Especially in the 8th chapter, when Lord Chaitanya was discussing with Ramananda Rai, he discusses from Varnashram level up to Radha Bhava. <laughs> so, there are the discussions of Sadhya and Sadhana. He was relishing all Radha Krishna Tattva and Radha Krishna pastimes. And uh, definitely, Ramanandra is the dear associate of Lord Chaitanya. Some say he is an incarnation of Lalita. Some say he is an incarnation of Vishakha. But nevertheless, he is in the most innermost uh, company of uh, Krishna. So, that is definitely Mahaprabhu's, Mahaprabhu's observed in the internal reasons for his descent. And later in Ratha Yatra also, Mahaprabhu is totally absorbed in Radha Bhav and uh, thinking uh, of himself as Srimati Radharani who saw Krishna in Kurukshetra and uh, she was trying to pull Krishna from Kurukshetra to Vrindavan. That is Ratha Yatra. That's the theme of Ratha Yatra. So like that we see glimpses of Mahaprabhu's uh, absorption in Radha Bhava even in Madhya but they are a little less, but uh, preaching is more. Mm. Mahaprabhu gives his teachings to uh, Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami for about six chapters. They will go like that from 19th chapter till 24th chapter. is all thick philosophy, uh, teachings on Bhakti Yoga. And 25th chapter also uh, goes like that, uh, transformation of Prakashananda Saraswati. And the sixth chapter goes in uh, transforming Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. And nine chapter goes in discussions with Tattvavadis and Venkata Bhatta and all that. So like that, uh, there is a lot of philosophy in Madhya also. So Mahaprabhu is just trying to preach. That's an external reason for Mahaprabhu's descent. But uh, in Anjalila, apart from several exchanges with devotees like, uh, like uh, Vallabha Bhatta, then Gopinath Patnaik, Haridas Thakur, Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, and uh, and Prajimna Mishra, uh, Ramananda Rai. So like that, there are so many nice pastimes in Anjalila that reflect Vaishnava character and loving relationships between the Lord and Vaishnavas. Through that also Mahaprabhu did a lot of preaching. But the later chapters, at least last six, seven chapters of Anjalila are filled with descriptions of how Mahaprabhu is totally immersed in the uh, mood of Shirmati Radharani. In the last 18 years, he is generally in seclusion and especially in the last 12 years of his life, he was he had spent his time uh, releasing the mood of Shirmati Radharani. Mm-hmm. So that's the, uh, the that's what is being described in these chapters. In the 15th chapter, uh, Kavaraj Goswami says that Mahaprabhu has done all his activities little mechanically uh, but within his mind he is always meditating on Krishna. Then, uh, uh, then we see that Mahaprabhu uh, 
a small incident is mentioned from the seventh shloka of this chapter ekadina karena prabhu jagannath darshan jagannath he dekhe sakshat vrajendra nandan ekadina one day karena prabhu jagannath darshan he went to jagannath temple to take darshan of the deity jagannath he dekhe sakshat vrajendra nandan as soon as he saw jagannath he only saw uh, the two handed form of krishna uh, standing in a three fold bending uh, posture hmm? is rajendra nandan is the son of nanda maharaj so jagannath has a different form with big eyes and all but uh, when lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was taking darshan of jagannath ji he remembered krishna in vrindavan so there is beautiful painting also of this past time it's there somewhere in the book and eight shlokas ek bare sphure prabhura krishnera pancha guna pancha gune kare panchendriya aakarshana ah uh, mahaprabhu realized that lord, lord jagannath as krishna himself sri gora sri krishna sri jagannath you know that bhajan uh, so here gora is seeing jagannath and remembering krishna but this gora jagannath krishna all are same one personality so the chaitanya's five senses immediately became absorbed in attraction for uh, the five qualities of krishna panch gune kare panchendriya aakarshana so krishna krishna is so beautiful uh, that krishna's form attracted the eyes of lord chaitanya and krishna's playing of flute and his singing is so attractive that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's ears were attracted then krishna's bodily fragrance and uh, uh, the fragrance of the garlands that he wear and the fragrance of tulasi leaves that are offered to his lotus feet all this attracted the nostrils of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and uh, krishna's transcendental sweetness attracted mahaprabhu's tongue what does this mean so when krishna eats mahaprasad uh, sorry krishna eats bhoga and converts it into mahaprasad that mahaprasad which is mixed with the saliva of krishna is so nectarian and those who are spiritually advanced can actually uh, relish uh, relish uh, the taste of mahaprasad thinking that krishna has eaten this food but ordinary struggling sadhakas uh, who are still not very advanced uh, they discriminate mahaprasad also i like paneer sabji no i will not take dudhi sabji or uh, i will take sweet i will not take this i will not so there is some kind of uh, discrimination even in mahaprasad also but everything is eaten by krishna even has developed elevated consciousness then mahaprasad whatever is touched by krishna whatever is glanced by krishna is divine and uh, uddhava says tvayapa bhukta sragandha vaso lankara kirtita uchchhta dasino bhogaihi tava mayam te mahi in the 11th canto of shrimad bhagavatam uddhava says that tvayapa bhukta sragandha o oh krishna the garlands and the sandalwood pearl the ornaments the garments and whatever you have enjoyed and left uh, we accept it as mahaprasad and by accepting all this to be a tava maya ji nahi we can easily cross over this uh, maya so uh, one of the most effective ways of transcending maya is to honor the tadiya of krishna to honor the mahaprasad garlands of krishna to honor mahaprasad of krishna Uh, the eatables and to honor the tulsi leaves of to krishna uh, to honor the garments of krishna uh, to honor everything that is coming from krishna our morning program is uh, filled with uh, coming in contact with krishna tadi we smell the flowers or scent offered to krishna uh, we take the sandalwood pulp offered to krishna and we take charanamrit which is which bathe krishna Uh, and 
we we accept the lamp offering uh, which is offered to krishna so like that we are coming in contact with krishna's pradeya uh, the paraphernalia that krishna has used in that so by this we can transcend maya so here i am mean, not a sir that is part of our sadhana but uh, mahaprabhu is not a sadhak <laughs> mahaprabhu is totally absorbed in Uh, transcendental consciousness. There also, all his senses are completely satisfied by Krishna's senses, Krishna's attributes. Mm, Krishna's body is that attracted the sensation of Mahaprabhu's touch, uh, and uh, in this way, all the five senses of Krishna, all the five senses of Mahaprabhu are attracted by Krishna's various attributes. Now, in the fourth chapter of Adi Lila, also how. Several attributes of Radharani attract Krishna, Krishna's five senses, and how several attributes of Krishna attract Radharani's five senses are mentioned very elaborately in the in the fourth chapter of Adi Lila. You can go through very nice description there. And uh, even in Rudra Gita, in Shrimad Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva says. दर्शन नोदृक्षूण देहि भागवता प्रियतम स्वाद्रियगुणाजन दर्शन नो विदृक्षूण ओ लॉर्ड प्लीज गिव अस दर्शन वी आर एक्सट्रीमली इगर टू टेक युअर दर्शन देहि प्लीज गिव अस भागवता व्हाट कैंड ऑफ दर्शन यू विल गिव व्हाट कैंड ऑफ फॉर्म दट यू विल शो अस देहि भागवता व्हाट एवर फॉर्म इज वर्शिप बाई Uh, your devotees that you show uh-huh. so in this way uh, lord shiva also uh, requests uh, lord krishna so dehi bhagavata astitam rupam priyatamam swanam that form especially vridhendra nandan form krishna is a perfect boy in vrindavan that form is very dear to all the devotees rupam priyatamam swanam And Sarvendriya Gunan Jenam. This line is very much fitting in our current context of this book of Adilila. Adilila. Uh, uh, Sarvendriya Gunan Jenam means Krishna's form completely satisfies all our five senses. Okay. So conditioned souls in this material world are immersed in sense enjoyment, but the real sense enjoyment is experienced by Krishna. Krishna's senses and our Actual sense enjoyment is to bring our senses in contact with the master of our senses, that is Krishna. When Krishna enters Vrindavan, the ambience of Vrindavan completely satisfies his senses. Uh, so now, when Krishna enters Vrindavan, uh, Krishna, the Sukadev Goswami describes, "Barha pidam nata bara vapu karna yo karne karam brhasa ha prithana ka kapisham vaidyam tin chamala." ंग and the little sound made by the waterfalls and the movements of the trees and the blowing of cool breeze and wind there so they are creating a very pleasant sensation to the ears and the the cool breeze of vrindavan is carrying the fragrance of lotus leaves that are blooming in the ponds in vrindavan so that's creating a very sweet sensation to the nostrils of krishna and this breeze when it touches krishna's transcendental body krishna's skin krishna's uh, sense of touch is being satisfied so uh, vrindavan is satisfying all the five senses of krishna when krishna goes to yamuna and then drinks little water or krishna goes to any any tree and plus a flower a uh, plus a fruit and eats that creates a lot of happiness to his tongue and the entire ambience of vrindavan pleases krishna's transcendental eyes 
this the the whole Vrindavan abode is transcendently pleasing to all the five senses of Krishna. His eyes, his tongue, his ears, his skin. Uh, uh, they are all completely satisfied. His nose, they are all completely satisfied. And when we come in touch with Krishna, when we take darshan of Krishna, when we see Krishna's form, all our five senses are satisfied. Sir, when do you want to know? As Mahaprabhu goes very satisfied. So Krishna, when he plays his flute, our ears are satisfied. Uh, and uh, Krishna's beautiful attire, his body, his form, completely pleases our eyes. And uh, the fragrance coming from the Tulasi offered to Krishna's uh, lotus feet, mixed with the natural fragrance of Krishna's body uh, and garlands, Vajayanti Mala, completely pleases our nostrils. Uh, and when we fall at the feet of Krishna, uh, our our sense of touch also is satisfied. When we chant the holy name of Krishna, our tongue is satisfied. When we taste the remnants of Krishna, our tongue is satisfied. So in this way, all our senses are completely pleased when we bring them in contact with Krishna. And this, that is the way to even transcend Maya. Krishnikesha, Krishnikena, Krishnikesha Sevanam Bhaktir Ishyate. So, bhakti means to engage our senses in Krishna, to bring our senses in contact with Krishna, and that's the real sense of enjoyment. And enjoyment is not hearing some filmy music or seeing some sensual uh, you know, scenes, uh, figures, or uh, eating some delicious food. That is not sense of enjoyment. The real sense of enjoyment of every soul is to bring one senses in contact with Krishna. That's the real sense enjoyment. In Mahaprabhu is Mahaprabhu's uh, all senses are attracted by Krishna, and only Krishna has the ability to completely attract our senses. No other sense subject in this material world can attract our senses as much as Krishna does. Only thing is our senses are not yet developed to uh, experience Krishna's. Uh, Sweetness. But Radharani's senses are completely developed to attract Krishna's sweetness. So much so that if Krishna becomes intrigued, I, mean, I, am, I am the possessor of these senses, I am the possessor of these qualities. But Radharani is experiencing 10 million times more happiness than me when she is serving me, when she is seeing me, uh, when she is touching me, uh, when she is. Uh, uh, smelling the fragrance coming out of her body. So she is, ex she is uh, uh, experiencing more happiness than me. What's happening? Unless I take her position, I won't be able to relish my own sweetness. Because gulab jamun doesn't know its own sweetness. The person who is eating the gulab jamun knows. If the gulab jamun becomes the person, then gulab jamun can know how sweet and how tasty it is. Some, somewhat similar is the case of Krishna. So Krishna becomes very, very ecstatic. Uh, uh, in in Krishna becomes very excited in getting absorbed in the mood of Radhara. Actually, we are meant to uh, always think of Krishna, and that relish uh, supreme pleasure. Nothing in this material world can give our sense of pleasure. Nothing in the material world can give our mind also pleasure. Mind is the sixth sense. So how will mind get pleasure? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Manmana bhava madbhakto madhya jivam namaskuru. Uh, Manmana, always think of me. Bhava madbhakto means to come my devotee. Uh, so like that Krishna says, uh, how uh, we can be happy. Now, what does it mean, manmana? Ramanaja Chari says, manmana means think of Krishna. But what does it mean to think of Krishna? Thinking of Krishna means immersing our mind in various qualities of Krishna. And how many qualities Krishna has? Unlimited qualities Krishna has. And out of these unlimited qualities, some qualities are very prominent. So, our uh, uh, Ramanaja Chari says, what does it mean to absorb our mind in Krishna? What is this manmana? The word manmana, what does it mean? 
So, what are the seven oceans of Radharani? Okay, so Radharani is also compared with seven oceans. Why? Lavanya Sindhu means she is an ocean of loveliness. 
ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಲಾವಣ್ಯ ಸಿಂಧು ಅಮೃತ ಛವಿ ರೂಪ ಸಿಂಧುವಿನ್ ಶೀ ಇನ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಹರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿವ್ ದನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅನ್ ಆರ್ನಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಇನ್ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಓಕೆ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಅಮೃತ ಛವಿ ರೂಪ ಸಿಂಧು ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಿಕಾ ಸ್ಫುರ ತುಮೇ ಹೃದಯ ಕೇಳಿ ಸಿಂಧು ಕೇಳಿ ಸಿಂಧು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಗೌಲ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸರ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸರ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಅವರೇಜ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಸೋ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಲೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಮ್ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಮ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದಮ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಬಟ್ ಶೀ ಇಸ್ ಎನ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಇಸ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ನಾವು ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ರಾಧಾರಾಣಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ಸೆವೆನ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ನೌ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನೈನ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಏಕ ಮನ ಪಂಚ ದಿಕ್ಕೆ ಪಂಚ ಗುಣ ತಾನೆ ಟಾನ ಟಾನಿ ಪ್ರಭು ರಾಮನ ಹೈಲ ಆಗಿ ಯಾನಿ so just as in a tug of war the single mind of lord chaitanya was attracted in five different directions by five transcendental attributes of krishna thus he became unconscious he became imbalanced he was quite erratic in his movements hena kale ishwarera uttalabhoga sarila bhakta gana mahaprabhu re ghare laya aila ten shloka this then utul bhoga of ceremony of lord jagannath and and the devotees who were accompanying lord chaitanya took him back from temple because mahaprabhu became unconscious this by this thought and later in this chapter there is more elaboration on this event so basically we need to understand that mahaprabhu was constantly immersed in an ocean of mercy the ocean of uh, love for krishna in the mode of radharani so uh, like uh, although krishna has unlimited sweetness the ability to experience that sweetness and relish that sweetness uh, is there in shrimati radharani to the highest possible extent no one can love krishna as much as radharani loves no one can uh, relish krishna company as much as radharani loves now we may have very dear friend closest friend Uh, but uh, how long we can stay with this person? So, you may meet this person after one year. Oh my God, every moment is precious. Uh, you may stay for one day, one full day. He's available for you. You may spend a lot of time. Uh, the whole day, okay, let's not waste a single moment. Let's, let's spend time, let's catch it. But if the same person doesn't stay one day, he stays for one week. It's funny, how much time you can spare? Okay, fine, we have... we we spend a lot of time i have some other works to do we we'll just go here and there if this person stays for uh, one year with us only then we just uh, uh, we don't have enough to share with this person but but radharani experiences millions of yugas of separation with my i think so there is no certificate course or diploma course or degree course that certifies us as lovers of krishna so we uh, our love for krishna is measured by the amount of separation that we feel for krishna so if we have love for someone we should feel separation from this person to the degree we wish this person to that degree we are loving this person so we need to understand that radharani is missing krishna at every moment even in krishna's company radharani feels separation from krishna uh, even all the gopis uh, they criticize the creator for creating this eyelids that constantly blink because that blink of an eye is creating unlimited separation when the shri mata radharani and krishna were sitting next to each other and they were just discussing something and when the bumble bee is coming and uh, bothering radharani making some sound like that It's quite irritating sometimes 
So sometimes when I'm giving class also near my window, sometimes some bees come and uh, they make some sound. So Radharani is getting a little bothered and Krishna told Madhumangal, hey, he chased this bee away. And Madhumangal came uh, and, uh, and he chased the bee away and then came back and uh, gave a report to Krishna. Krishna Madhu went away. Then what did he mean? B is also called Madhu. So when Madhu, Madhu, Madhu Mangal said that uh, Madhu went away, he meant that the B went away. But uh, Krishna's another name is Madhu, and Radharani thought that Krishna went away. And she started crying profusely. Krishna is staying right next to her, but she is crying. The very statement that Krishna has drawn away could not. Uh, uh, we digested by Radha and she was feeling immense separation from Krishna. She was crying and Krishna said, Why are you crying? I'm right next to you. I have not gone anywhere. I'm just right next to you. But still, she's crying, crying profusely. She's crying. And seeing her intense love for Krishna, Krishna started crying. Can a person love another person to this degree? Uh, and it, can a person be loved by another person to such a degree? It's, it's uh, unimaginable. Seeing Radha and his love for him, Krishna started crying. And the combined tears of Radha and Krishna form a frame sarovar. It's still in Vrindana. So, the, the love that we have for another person is measured by the amount of separation one feels. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is constantly immersed in an ocean of separation from Krishna, uh, especially when he stayed in Jagannath Puri during the last 18 years or especially 12 years of uh, that tenure. So he was experiencing the emotions of Radharani. Even Krishna also was quite intrigued and he was quite curious to understand what's the extent of Radharani's love for him. So as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is fulfilling all his unfulfilled desires. So that's the scheme prominent thing in Adilila, several episodes, apart from various other Vaishnava character related uh, pastimes of Lord Chaitanya with his devotees. So, what's the time now? It's, uh, it's 9.31. I'll, I'll conclude here. If anyone has any questions or comments, you can share. Otherwise, we can end the call. Thank you so much, Prabhu. It was such a beautiful class. I really... Um... Thank you so much for bringing out those uh, oceans of uh, comparison between Krishna and Srimati Radharani. Both were very beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhu, and how important and how nice to actually dovetail our senses in the service of Krishna. That was so beautifully explained, the mood of Krishna and Radharani. Thank you. Oh, Prabhuji, can you hear anything? Prabhuji, can you I hear? I cannot hear anything. No, no, no. I can't hear. Uh, can you hear us now? Hare Krishna? Uh, it's not clear. It's not clear. Uh, Anjana Gopika Mataji. Hare uh, Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much uh, for your class. Is there any way have any question or comment for Prabhuji? Otherwise, we can end the call. Thank you so much. Prabhuji. I'm unable to hear. Maybe I uh, hear. If you are speaking to Zoom chat, na? just one Zoom, minute, one minute. Type Prabhu. your question in the chat and someone can read it. Yeah, one minute, Prabhu. Yeah, devotees, they can put their question in the chat, I think. So. And we can read. We have any Prabhu, if you give me one minute, I can connect all the calls. Give me one second. I'm just trying. Then everybody can hear everything. Yeah, you're yeah, very clear, Prabhu. Yeah, just give me one second, Prabhu. Yeah, very clear. Yeah. 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 Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. You have not entered any numbers.
अब क्या हुआ फोन जो स्क्रेच हो गया Prabhu, you can go now. People, you can ask the question. Hey Krishna, is there any question or comment for the Prabhu ji? Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Bandhavats. Prabhu, can you hear us? Can you hear us? ओशन कंपेरिजन Krishna and Shri Radha Rani, Shri Mati Radha Rani, Sam Prabodha Nanda Saraswati, and then of course Lord Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita commentary. It was so beautiful to hear. And the point that you are driving about engaging your senses, and that is in Krishna consciousness, which actually brings real happiness. One thing that I want to understand, get a clearer understanding, is uh, uh, when you were talking about the separation of Shri Mati Radha Rani and uh, Krishna, and talking about Now, even when she was with Krishna, she constantly felt that separation. Uh, and at the end, you did mention that uh, the extent of one's love is seen. Uh, uh, how much they feel separation from their loved one. So, having said that, um, in this world also we have relationships, uh, but somehow, um, you know, all the relationships. Yes, we do say that we have a lot of um, love for these different relationships. and uh, uh i feel uh is it really the i mean i we don't see so much glimpse of separation uh, in that sense uh so i was just wondering is it like very uh, different um, you know the separation that is felt towards um, you know the absence of the lord versus the separation that is felt towards very close relationships i mean the way it is described in scripture is not reachable yeah, okay zoom hare krishna i came on zoom okay oh, okay. okay yeah so prabhu i came uh, out so prabhu uh, you, uh, you were mentioning about um, separation in general and uh, i mean the compare of course you were talking about shrimati radharani and krishna and the separation that uh, shrimati radharani was feeling from krishna even during union so and uh, also there was a mention that uh, 
the extent of love that we really have for a person is seen by the separation that we feel for him um mm. just wanted some understanding because uh, the relationships of this world they seem a little more different where uh, Uh, we don't feel such kind of separations that is mentioned in scripture right it's a very superficial separation generally the mm. separation feel is in terms of uh, what I, i feel in the absence of that person what am i lacking it is not really about that person at all in one sense it's very self mm. um so can you just make a comment is there a world of a difference between the kind of a separation that is seen in the spiritual world and here meaning everything comes from the spiritual world everything ultimately comes from krishna so we should have a minuscule amount is what i understand but still it is i don't know if i'm wrong or it just depends on the emotion of the person it varies from person to person the separation seems very superficial so can you comment hmm. on it um, a little more yes mata ji so whatever we see in the material world is a reflection of what exists in the spiritual world and uh, the highest form of love which we see in the spiritual world is in paratiya rasa and that's its lowest reflection in the material world is in illicit relationship between men and women in this material world now if you see uh, if at all we have to make a comparison between uh the pure love ex- that exists in the spiritual world which is totally based on selflessness selfless service uh that purest form of love can be seen in a mother for her young child small child baby child. and baby is little grown up and her son or daughter are grown up then that must have not be seen but when the infant baby is totally dependent on the mother you can see extreme amount of uh, selflessness in the mother love in the mother protection in the now mother is giving uh, so much of nourishment from her own body to the child and she is compromising on her food or her sleep and comforts to keep the child comfortable uh, so now that's the uh, end of the child's blessing uh, go somewhere here and there uh, and mother becomes panic she is selflessness especially in a mother child relationship so does it make some sense mother yeah so basically which means to right. say that depending on how uh, dependent i mean like completely surrendered and dependent we are towards the object of love um, that much uh, separation we actually feel from that person is that how we understand it then ultimately taking the child and mother example it's it's not actually we being dependent on others uh it's uh, they being dependent on us hari krishna hari bol uh, yes prabhu we yeah. can hear you yeah so uh, like it's not exactly uh, like others are dependent on me so out of uh, compassion or some kindness i just take care or i am dependent on them so 
uh, I should be taken care of. Then there are feelings of separation. Yeah, it happens in this material world, but in uh, uh, but in uh, Vrindavan and in the cases of all the gopis and other Vrajavasis, uh, it's all about. Uh, uh, it's not dependence on each other that matters. It's totally pure uh, feelings of uh, uh, service. Right? I want to please. Uh, I want to please the other person. And only I can please that person. Now the gopis are feeling separation from Krishna. Uh, it's not that they will be unhappy in Krishna's absence. They know that no one can serve and please Krishna as much as they do. So if someone else can do better service than the gopis, then the gopis are okay. Fine, Krishna went to Mathura. Let Krishna stay in Mathura, let Krishna stay in Dwaraka, we don't mind, as long as he gets the best quality of service that we are providing him in, in Vrindavan. But the gopis are completely convinced that only in Vrindavan Krishna is happy. Only we gopis can render him the best possible service. Now Krishna is missing all the service. So they are not comfortable. Okay. So it's total selflessness. Uh, and uh, yeah, you may use the word dependence. Krishna is dependent on the gopis to get to get the and to get his enjoyment, and gopis are aware of it. But more than using the word dependence, we can just use the words service and selflessness and a, a, a sincere feeling to please Krishna. Uh, and when we say the word dependence, so Krishna is dependent on me for his pleasure. Okay, but. Uh, then that kind of induces a sense of, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, some kind of pride or some kind of uh, happiness or some, some other kind of feeling when, when we notice that other person is dependent on me. But uh, gopis never feel like that. We, although they are completely convinced and they are aware that Krishna uh, gets the best quality of service from they have zero pride. One of the qualities of Radharani is, although her love is unlimited and the love is most exalted, it's it has it's divide of pride. Kavras Goswami writes that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So there is no pride. So Krishna cannot tolerate pride. So does it make some sense, Mataji? Yes, Prabhu. I mean, yeah, it kind of makes sense. If I'm able to put these things together, yes, it makes sense. Thank you for understanding, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, you know kind of throwing more light on it. Thank you for the very wonderful class, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Any Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Such a beautiful class, Prabhuji, and I really like the way you answered Mataji regarding the last question. I was also wondering. So, uh, I mean, many times. Uh, the spiritual love is uh, likened to the mother's love on material um, realm. So, so being unconditional, like how a mother, uh, you know, uh, even if the child is kicking her in the womb or outside, you know, the mother's love is unconditional. So is un unconditional also a part of this uh, um, spiritual love, Prabhu? I was just wondering. Yes, Mataji, thank you. Thank you for that. Complete, yes. Oh, okay. Prabhu is not there. Shall we? Shall I, I am there. Shall we conclude the call? Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. I think we don't have any question or comment. Now we can end the call. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your resources. Thank you, thank you. Now we can end the call now. Saying our wishes to all the devotees and Prabhuji, His Grace. Madarshan Prabhu, Vansa Kalpatar Vesha, Kalpas in the Bay of the Tapatana, Nam, Namadi, you wish. No, 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 no,